My name is Dr. Ram Chutani, Director of Endoscopy at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston, affiliated with Harvard Medical School, and the title of our study is Balancing Risks and Rewards, a Critical Review of Intragastric Balloon for Weight Loss. In the early part of my career, I was very actively involved in the placement of the Garen Edwards balloon, which was the first balloon developed for obesity. It was an interesting balloon. It led to significant weight loss. However, as we all know, it was pulled out of the market because of many complications that occurred. And hence, no further balloons have been placed in the United States for the last 25 years. However, recently FDA is in the process of approving two intragastric balloons. And I personally have been involved in the development of the first non-endoscopic, completely procedureless intragastric balloon. And I was interested in the strengths and limitations of the current generation balloons available around the world. We reviewed all the literature that had been published on the Gobera balloon. We then specifically looked to answer three questions. Number one, when did the weight loss occur in these patients and if it was time dependent? Number two, once the balloon was removed six months after placement, did the weight loss persist and how much of the weight loss persisted? Lastly, we looked at studies that address adverse events and whether these adverse events were time dependent. And when during the course of balloon placement did these adverse events occur? The results were indeed very interesting. What we found was that 80% of the weight loss that occurred really occurred in the first three months of the balloon therapy. Also, we found that once the balloons were removed, even one year post-balloon removal, 50% or perhaps even more than 50% of weight loss was still maintained. The complications that did occur were due to balloon deflation, and that occurred if the balloon was left in place greater than six months, at which time it could deflate, migrate into the small intestine, and obstruct. However, obstructions were relatively rare compared to what you would have expected with migration. The implications of this study are that balloons are indeed growing in importance and that balloons can achieve meaningful weight loss and indeed a large chunk of this weight loss can be maintained despite the balloons having exited the stomach. Also, we find that it becomes really important to follow these balloons over a longer period and making sure that they are removed before the patient exits the trial. In addition, this also gave us assurance that a balloon that may last in the stomach for a shorter duration of time and can pass by itself may give meaningful weight loss to a large number of patients and indeed that this weight loss may be sustained over a much longer period of time. The obesity epidemic around the world is only increasing, and only a very small percentage of patients who qualify for weight loss surgery actually end up getting it. In addition, diet and exercise really doesn't work for the majority of people. And hence, balloons may be the future. Balloons may indeed form the basis of truly meaningful weight loss in a large patient base. This study offers a better understanding of how intragastric balloons work. And it also demonstrates that these balloons can achieve really meaningful weight loss in a safe fashion. It also forms the basis of how future balloons may be developed to allow even better weight loss and a safer weight loss for patients.